What's up everyone? In this video, we learn how to get a user's posts from Instagram and display them on our website, just like this. Picking up from our last video, right here where we got our user's information, we are now gonna display our user's media. Here you see I have displayed user's page one and I have 25 posts. That's because Instagram returns 25 posts per page. I have dumped out the raw data here in a text area and the posts are contained in the data array. In the data array, I will have 25 posts and each comes back with an ID, a caption, a media type, and a media URL. At the bottom of the raw data, there is going to be a paging array. This is what we use to get the next page or the previous page. All you have to do is hit this next URL and I will get page two. Below the raw data, I'm going to mark up my raw data with some HTML so we can see it on our website. Got ourselves an image here, got ourselves a caption, an ID, the media type, and the media URL. We have some images, got some videos here. After 25 posts, we come to page two. Page two is displaying 25 posts. Same thing, posts are all in the data array. At the bottom of our raw data this time, we will have a next and a previous URL. Since we're on page two, we can either go back to page one or we can go to page three. And again, under the raw data, I have displayed the page two posts and marked them up with some HTML. And that is how we display our Instagram posts on our website. Before we start coding, guys, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, that way I can keep bringing you guys more coding videos. Let's code. Heading on over to our index file, we are going to start out by adding our user ID to our params. This way, when we create our class, we can save the user ID. And we need to save the user ID because it's required in order to get a user's posts. Over in our Instagram basic display API class, we are going to set this user ID in our set users Instagram access token. Currently in this function, we're checking if we have an access token or if we have a get code. In the case we have an access token, we are just gonna set the user ID to the params value that came in. If we have a git code, we need to set the user ID equal to the response that we got back from our user access token response. When we use that git code to get an access token, we not only get an access token back, but we also get the user ID back. And we can't forget to define our user ID variable up at the top of our class. All right, now that we are saving our user ID, we can go ahead and create a function to get the user's posts. I'm going to scroll down in our class here and I'm going to copy our get user function. Right under it, I'm going to call this function get users media. Now we need to update these params so we hit the correct endpoint. We are still using the graph base URL, which is graph.instagram.com. After the graph base URL, we pass along the user ID. And the endpoint is slash media. The type is a get request. Now we just have to update the URL params to get back the correct fields. The fields is a comma separated string of the fields that we want to get back for each post. In this case, we want to get back the ID, the caption, the media type, and the media URL. Then we will pass along those parameters into our make API call function, and we will get our response back from Instagram, containing the first page of our posts. Now all we have to do is head back to our index page and display these posts out on the front end. Now all we have to do is head over to our index file and display our posts out in the browser. So first we want to actually get the posts. To do that, we're going to call our get users media function. Give ourselves a heading, page one, and we're going to display the count of how many posts we got back. Next, we're going to create ourselves a text area and just dump the raw data in there. So we have gotten our user's media, displayed the count, and then dumped that out into a text area on our landing page. Save that and head over to our website. Refresh it, and it looks like we're getting some data back. So we got page 125 raw data. 
and we have 25 posts. They all contain an ID, a caption, media type, and media URL. Actually, in the text area, we want to print out everything, not just the data, because we need to see the paging array that comes back in the response as well. Refresh my page. There we go. Now we have our data array, which contains 25 posts. And at the bottom, we should see a paging array. There it is, paging, and we have our next URL. This, will, this URL will give us our page too. For our first page, we want to also style up our posts instead of just the raw data. So we'll create a list of all of our posts. All right, so we have our loop set up here where we loop over each data, which is in itself a post. It contains the ID, the caption, the media URL, and the media type. The one thing we have to do is we have to do a few different things based on the media type. If it's an image, we want to use the image tag. If it's a video, we want to use the video tag. If it's a carousel album, we also want to use the image tag because it will return the first image in the carousel album. We have our if statement set up here. We're going to display an image or a video based on the media type. Let's check it out in the browser, see if we're on track. Hit our refresh button, scroll down, and looks like we have our post displaying correctly. We got video elements and image elements. After our image is displayed, then we just want to display the other data we got back for each post, the caption. After the caption, we have our ID. Then we have our media type. Last but not least, our media URL. Back over to the browser, refresh it, scroll down, and there we have, we have our image, our caption, our ID, media type, and the actual URL of the media for the first 25 posts that we got back. Now we are gonna write ourselves a function to make use of the paging URLs. Down here in the raw response at the bottom, we have our next URL. So we're gonna create a function that we can pass in this URL and get page two. Over in our class, we're gonna copy the get users media function right below it, and we're gonna call our function get paging. This function will take in the paging endpoint, which will be that next URL. The params for this are going to be quite simple because our endpoint URL is going to be whatever we pass in to our function. The type is a git and we don't need to pass any fields in. However, we are going to create a flag here, paging, and we're going to set it to true. And we need this because we have to modify our make API call function in order to not fall into if it's a post or a git. If git and paging is false. Our get paging function, however, does have this paging, so the endpoint is the endpoint that's passed in, and we don't fall into either of these if statements. We simply hit that endpoint and get our response back from Instagram. So now back on the front end, we can display out our page too. Right under our list, we're going to call this users media next. And we're going to call our paging function, get paging. And in it, we're going to pass in our users media paging next. Take this to page two. Display the count out as well as dump the raw data into another text area. Before we display it on the page, let's just make sure our raw data is coming out correctly. Refresh it. Scroll down past our first page and page two. There we go. We got 25 posts. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, we see our paging array now contains a next. So we can go to page three or previous. We can get our page one again. Last bit is the simplest. We are just going to copy this whole posts list right under our page two. And all we have to do is update the variable right here. Instead of looping over the user's media data, 
we're going to loop over the user's media next data because that is page two. Refresh our page. Let's head down to page two. There it is, raw data page two. And under our raw data, our posts are displaying just like they displayed up here. Some videos, some images, and that displayed all 25 from page two. There you have it guys, that's how you display a user's Instagram posts on your website. That's gonna do it for this video. Subscribe, leave a like, comment, let me know what you wanna see coded up next. I'll catch you guys later.